Hmm. Mellow greetings, everybody. My name is James. I am from the internet, and we are less than a week away from the election. Dun, 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 dun. So I noticed uh, in the last week or so, because I've been focusing so much on the election rather than, you know, the large meta stuff I would rather talk about, like you know, capitalism and the relationship of, of labor and capital and you know, housing and how all landlords are parasites. And these are the things I would rather discuss, but we're knee deep in the election. So, you know, here we are. So I've noticed that concentrating so much on Trump and, and the election, I'm getting a lot of messages from people who think I am perhaps a tad unfair to El Presidente, the commandant, Comrade Trump. Now, sure, he, he does have five kids and three baby mamas, and he is a raging narcissist, and until four years ago was an unemployed reality game show host. But, you know, fine, let's say maybe I'm a little biased. Maybe I'm a little unfair. So I thought, since we're going into the election, I would take a look at the election promises that Trump made, uh, you know, both on the campaign trail in 2016, uh, you know, coming up to the election here now for 2020 and what he said his goals were going to be uh, during his, his national addresses. And I think holding somebody to their word would be a good metric, a good measuring stick to, to determine how successful a president has been, you know, because you can have an opinion based on ideology or religion or, you know, personal biases, you know, like perhaps I'm just a wee bit biased against Donald Trump. Fine, whatever. But the bottom line is, what did you say you were going to do? And then what did you do? I, I think this is a fair metric. So let's take a look at what Trump said he was going to do and what he's actually done. So we can figure out, is he an effective president? And uh, could he possibly do anything in the positive if he got a second term? Let's check it, check it out. Here's what we got. Donald Trump made many promises in 2016 and early in his term. Which has he kept? And what is he still working on? Surely there's a nice working list, something very easy we could take a look at. Uh, Donald Trump says he's not a politician. As proof, the real estate developer... <coughs> points to promises he made both on the 2016 campaign and early in his term, and he says delivered. Quote, unlike so many others who came before me, I kept my promises, Trump said during his State of the Union speech. So what were those major promises? The appointment of conservative judges to federal courts, broad tax cuts, building a border wall on the southern border, and making Mexico pay for it. Massive deregulation, replacing Obamacare with health care, coverage plan that is, quote, far less expensive and far better. Bringing back manufacturing, reinvigorating fading industries such as coal and steel, renegotiating trade deals in a way that helps the U.S., moving the Israeli embassy to Jerusalem, curbing immigration, reducing the national debt, and withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord. So, we'll go down the list real quick. What's he done? Some of this he has done. Um, he did move the Israeli embassy to Jerusalem. This literally has no impact and no meaning to any American anywhere, but... This seemed to be an easy one because he had the deal on the bag with Bibby before he came out and said he was going to do it. So it was kind of like a freebie or a throwaway. And, you know, what's the actual benefit to you, you know, an American citizen, a student, uh, you know, a 20-something or 30-something working class person? The Israeli embassy being moved to Jerusalem has zero impact on your life. But sure. Okay, we're going to give him that one. Curbing immigration, if by separating parents from their children and then making sure there's a ton of picture and video out there to intimidate people from seeking a better life or coming to work in the fall to help, uh, you know, harvest all those crops like they've been doing every year for centuries now because uh, we as Americans can't possibly pick all that food ourselves. Uh, yes, he has managed to scare the shit out of enough people from Mexico, Central America, South America, that uh, immigration has definitely slowed down. So there's two in the win column for El Presidente. Withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord, that was really easy. That was just an executive order. Flash of a pen. Boom, we're going to give him that one too. Those three things he definitely did, uh, two of which just took an EO and one of which required uh, a repressive police state, violence, and a fear campaign. So... Rest of the list Whew. is a bad one, people. 
appointment of conservative judges to federal courts. Yes, we have been focusing on the Supreme Court because he's gotten three picks in one term. Uh, last time a president did that was Nixon. But uh, across the board, him and McConnell have been working on overdrive for three and a half years, just cramming judges through. I've made reference to this before. Trump has appointed nearly one quarter of all active federal judges. And this was from July 7th. And they were still pushing through three, four, five a week. So the number is now higher. But as of July 7th, he had 24% of all active federal judges. That's a quarter of all federal judges. And he's appointed the in less than four years. Obama has less than 40%. And that's what he appointed in eight years. So he also gets the nod for that. That's four. That's four promises he's kept. Okay. What about the rest of the list? Let's check it out. Broad tax cuts. Now, broad tax cuts would mean that they help more than one or two, you know, smaller subsets of American people. Let's see how that turned out. Republicans passed tax cuts, then profited. Two years after passage of the Trump Tax Act, its effects, some obvious, some hidden, are coming into focus. One is its cost. Contrary to Republican claims, the law is not paying for itself and is likely to burden the nation with an additional $1.9 trillion over 11 years beginning in 2018, according to the Congressional Budget Office. And while the tax cut rates for people of all income brackets, some of its tax benefits overtly favored the wealthy, such as the 2.5% point tax cut rate in the highest bracket and the doubling of the estate tax exemption to $11.2 million. Yeah, because I know so many working class people who have an estate that was worth like $6 million. And they were like, no, we're over the, we're over the threshold of 5 million. And now they're going to take all my shit. No, but don't worry. We raised that to 11.2 million. Other provisions were subtler, yet favored the wealthy even more. Tax breaks for their investments, for instance, or changes that boosted the value of their stocks. Among the rich beneficiaries are members of Congress, more than half of whom were found to be millionaires in 2014. That number is slowly and steadily increasing, by the way. The tax law's record corporate tax rate cut dropped it from 35% to 21%. That's how low the corporate tax rate is. So no, it would seem that his massive broad tax cut was only broad if you own a business, a corporation, or stocks in a business or corporation. Other than that, eh, not so much. What else you got? Building a border wall on the southern border and making Mexico pay for it. <laughs> So we all know Mexico ain't paying for shit, right? We're, we're all good on that one. So how much wall has Trump actually built that Mexico is most assuredly not paying for? Let's see. Border wall, hundreds of miles funded, five new miles built. Go! Ah, since he took office in 2017, the administration has set aside $15 billion dollars for 738 miles of walls and fencing with the money coming from Homeland Security, the Defense Department, and the Treasury Forfeiture Fund. <laughs> the federal government has completed 260 miles of replacement and secondary walls, but only five new miles of fencing where none existed before. And that's according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection data. Uh, that's not coming from beta cuck lib turds so big x on there donald trump not so good uh also did i mention mexico ain't paying for shit no uh so if mexico isn't paying for it who is um you you just spent 15 billion dollars on five miles a wall how about that Woo! crushing it trump crushing it yeah you should definitely give him another four years let's see massive deregulation you know, the jury's still out on deregulation because he seems to only deregulate uh, specific industries and specific acts where he has specific ties to CEOs or corporations who would benefit in that specific sphere. So we're going we're gonna to give him an incomplete on that one and we'll revisit it. 
Uh, replacing Obamacare with health care coverage plan that's far less expensive and far better. Anybody? Anybody seen a health care package? We're still waiting for him to release what the framework of that package would look like. We've been waiting for that for five years now. And he keeps saying, oh, but if I win, I'll show it to you. Kind of like his taxes. Or if, you know, you're a female and you're under 40, his flaccid penis. Hey, don't take my word for it. There's like 16 women with credible sexual assault and rape allegations against him. A number of which are uh, traveling around courthouses as we speak. Don't, don't give me shit for that one, okay? Not my fault. I just talk about the shit that happens. I don't do the shit. Let's see, bringing back manufacturing. Reinvigorating industries such as coal and steel. Hmm. Let's see. Don't! Manufacturing is now smallest share of U.S. economy in 72 years. I'm going to assume that does not count as reinvigorating manufacturing. So I guess that's not a thing. So let's see how he's doing with coal and steel. Because, you know, maybe manufacturing hit a bump. Little, little bumpy in the road. On peut. Let's see. Do! Despite boost by Trump administration, coal industry continues to fade. Decline is accelerated and is a factor in the election. Okay, so let's see. Manufacturing. Dying. Coal still dying. Uh, what about steel? A White House threat to expand tariffs on Chinese goods recently was lifted, but Trump's tax on steel imports from China and Europe, ultimately paid by U.S. consumers, that's you, remain on thousands of steel parts imported from China and Europe. Higher prices on consumer products contributed to falling demand. The result, the greatest slump in U.S. manufacturing in more than a decade. So, maybe not there? The price of steel plunged, in part, as a direct result of lower demand for manufacturers, putting pressure on steelmakers. In December, United States Steel said it was going to indefinitely idle most of a mill near Detroit. Some 1,500 workers from the facility got layoff notices. U.S. Steel also cut its capital spending forecast to $875 million, down from $950 million. Trump's embrace of protectionism has cost more jobs in the steel industry than it has saved, and it's cost American consumers and businesses more than $900,000 a year for every one of the jobs he still managed to spare. So, manufacturing in the shitter. Coal in the shitter. Steel, survey says, in the shitter. Bummer on that, huh? That's a, that's a, a, a triple squash. All right, so let's see. Broad tax cuts that weren't broad, building a border wall that's not built, making Mexico pay for it even though they're not, massive deregulation is an incomplete, replacing Obamacare, fail with a health coverage plan that's far less expensive and far better, fail, bring back manufacturing, fail, reinvigorating failing industries, fail, coal, fail, steel, fail, renegotiating trade deals in a way that helps the U.S. Huh. Trade deals. Okay. How, how are we doing on trade? Damn! Damn. So, uh, trade not so good either. Huh. I am boggled. Absolutely boggled. So, with six days before the election, if for some godly unknown reason you were still undecided... Here's your reminder that Donald Trump promised the world to everyone and just gave some shiny, pretty stuff to a small sliver of people, none of which were you. Keep your eye on the prize, people. I'm out. Peace.